Hello, welcome, and happy Sabbath. It's a pleasure being with you this evening for the special program, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, it's a space to share, to teach, and to grow together. And we hope that this program is already a blessing for each of us. And this instance that we share by resting, by experiencing God's peace will open new windows in our life. Before starting the program, before praying, let us hear a song will be interpreted by Arthur and Gabriel. pray. Thank you, Lord, for this special program. Thank you, Lord, for the space that you have prepared for us. We are here to be educated, to understand. We are here because we want to know you, because we want to serve the audience. Help us to be uh, attentive and to accept this message, this teaching, with an open-minded attitude. We pray you in the name of Jesus, the one and only Son. Amen. Today we have our special guest. We'll talk about generation and values. My values, my generation, my values. And the special guest is the Professor Andreas Breckman, who is Vice, the Vice Rector, the Program Director of the Master in Counseling at Friedenzauer University. So my generation, my values, today, Professor Andreas Breckman will, will help us to answer this question. My generation, my values. Professor Andreas, thank you for being with us. Now the flow is for you. Yes, generation X, Y, Z. Which generation are you? Actually, I am generation W. Never heard of it? 
Well, no, of course not, because in my time, they didn't have letters to describe a generation. I am part of the post-war generation, or if you want, the generation before Generation X. Now, since W comes before X, I guess I qualify for Generation W. Some speak of baby boomers at a time uh, when, at least in Europe and the Western world, the economy was growing, the rubble and destruction of World War II was tackled and tackled successfully. Everything, especially the economy, was booming. And people were optimistic and produced babies, lots of them. Baby boomers. Yep, I remember those years. It was uh, much later that people came to realize that the post-war generation still had to deal with the trauma of war. A war they never experienced, but their parents did. My mother was a teenager during World War II and lived in Berlin during that time. Have you ever seen pictures of the destruction of Berlin during World War II? Ah, well, as digital natives, you can find them on the internet. But the terror, the, the horror, night after night, trembling in some cellars, air raid cellars, is hardly conveyed by those black and white pictures. One day, my mom wasn't able to go to school. On that day, a bomb hit the air raid shelter of her school head-on, killing all of her classmates. Now, live with that. In the incredibly cold winters, with no heating system of any kind, the hunger and starvation for years, I heard my mom tell the story that her greatest imaginable birthday wish was a lettuce all for herself. And you what? A bit of salad? That's the greatest you can imagine? In the prosperity of the 60s, the bins on schoolyards often were filled with thrown away lunch packages. That made my stomach turn. That made me sick and angry. Even today, it's hard for me to throw away any food. Well, yes, if it's blue from mold, I might bin it. But otherwise, pass it over, I'll eat it. You see, I never saw the horrors of war. I never had to starve, experience cold or hunger. I mean, real cold and real hunger. And yet my generation was impacted by what happened in the previous generation. Thus, Generation W, impacted by the war, makes sense to me, even though this term is not used in the literature. We might come back to impact in a bit, though. Let's return to generation X, Y, Z, the generations you more likely will find yourself in. When is generation X starting? Well, actually, it depends on uh, who you ask. People aren't too sure. It's a craze that was created after the fact, from backward observation, from hindsight, as they would say. The real hype about Generation X came uh, with a book of that same name, Douglas Copeland, Generation X, Tales for an Accelerated Culture, first published in 1991. Usually, people think of Generation X as starting in 1965. Why? Because the baby boom was over. How come? A new contraceptive was invented 
and flooded the market. The pill. It changed attitudes and morals. Women were less afraid of becoming pregnant. More women were working outside their home. Women became more independent of men. Birth rates went down, divorce rates went up. And the children born during those years, 1965 to 1975 or 1980, nobody is too sure when Generation X ended. Some say Generation X is characterized by disorientation, lack of social concern, an attitude of entitlement, talking about rights, never of duties. Generation X is a synonym for a lazy lot. Is that a fair description of a generation? I'm not sure. And you better be careful what you say. My wife is Generation X. Generation Y, the generation born in the 1980s and 90s, comprising primarily the children of the baby boomers, were typically perceived as increasingly familiar with digital and electronic technology. Quick question if you are born during those years. Do you like to be described as a techie? Is that you? Generation Z. Again, nobody knows when this generation started. 1995, 97, 99, round about there. This is the first generation that grew up with the internet. Why? Because the internet only started slowly in the early 90s. It left the experimental laboratories in 1993. Fascinating story, by the way, well worth reading. Sometimes Generation Z are called Generation Zoomer. Okay, we all can identify with that, I guess. Corona made all of us Zoomers. But once again, do you like to be reduced to your ability to use the internet? Is that you? I hope not. Now, each generation has their special hallmark. Each generation has their own story to tell. But then... All generations are interconnected. You remember how I started to talk about my generation. I was impacted by a war which that particular generation never had to suffer and yet suffered from. It's all interconnected. And whether you're Generation X, Y or Z or even Alpha, the newest generation born after 2000 something, you are part of a larger family, part of a sequence of generation after generation. And here, here is the unifying factor. I'm reading from Psalm 148. Young men and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. As we enter the Sabbath, as we say Shabbat Shalom, we are connecting with the Ancient of Days. We are linking up to God of Heaven and to Christ Jesus, his Son. And believe it or not, through the Holy Spirit, also connect with other people, other generations, different as they may be. 
with their story, with their characteristics, whether they do them justice or are just a cliche. Jewish celebrations always have been cross-generational. Worship, festivities always brought together various generations. And each generation had a role to play. Children were to ask their parents, why do we celebrate this feast? And parents were to teach them what had been passed on from generation to generation. Which generation do you belong to? What is your story? What are your values? Tell your story, share it with others. But also share the stories of the generations past, the generations that impacted and formed you. But most of all, tell that wonderful story of your salvation. Talk and sing of this God of all generations. Give glory to him who created you. Give glory to him who redeemed you. That's what the Sabbath is all about, isn't it? Be cross-generational in your worship. And I use the term cross-generational with great care. Let us pray. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Andreas, for the presentation. You help us uh, deepening our understanding on generation and, and values. And it was listening to you, what you wrote, saying about generation and values were well, very fascinating. But we want to, to go deeper and deeper. That's why we want to, to ask you some questions. I'm sure that Berg has a wonderful question about values and generation, and you want to to ask this question, Bergi. Yeah, thank you, Valerie, and again, thank you, Andreas, for this presentation. We have learned, and most of all, we have been nourished for our faith and how to understand this interconnection between the generation, and that uh, yes, we have to tell our story in our generation. But also we have to recognize the past generation who have been through a lot and who have also given us some very good values to keep on. Okay, my question now um, uh, to Andreas is, how can we help the, the two generations, older generations and newer generation? how can we help them to have worship together as we have observed in our churches sometimes the, the there's a generational conflict between the older generation and the newer ones how can we help in solving that as we are worshiping the same god the unchanging god i think the answer is in what you just said at the end we are worshiping the same god and perhaps we need to be aware of that uh, more intentionally uh, and i personally believe that it is a good idea to worship together uh, like they did in in uh, israel of old that people of many generations are worshiping together and uh, yes there may be a time for youth worship or for a worship service for the elderly but the main idea is to young and old worship God together. And this means we have to, to listen to our differences. You know, we have to be able to and, and, and learn to handle different kinds of music, different uh, styles of worshiping. Uh, but it is an enrichment and we have to 
um, be aware, yes, we worship the same God and with all our different gifts and talents and different outlooks on life, um, this will look different, but it will enrich all of us with all the diversity we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't know if Valerie wants to follow up with another question. Yes, but you're very I also have a question. Yes, I, yes, I also have a question. So what would you say is characteristic of your generation in your culture? I'm sorry, Valerie, I'm having a problem hearing you at the moment. This is what happens when you are live. <laughs> yeah, can you rephrase? Uh, actually, I think... Uh, so do what? If he has a problem, I can... Yeah. Okay, so I, I can repeat the question. Yeah, please. Go ahead, Valerie. Uh, I think I heard yes, so question. my question is, what would you say is... His internet is very bad. Let me ask the question for him, because I heard it. Hello? He said... Oh, okay. What, okay. Would, what would you say is the characteristic of your generation in your culture? As a German, we're speaking now. We know mm -hmm. you've been... You told us your story somehow. But if you were asked what characteristic of your own generation from your culture, what would the answer be? Yes. Well, I think for one, uh, for one thing, we are in my generation is very aware of war times. Even though we haven't experienced the war, we still have to deal with it. Our parents uh, have been through the war time, through experience of hunger uh, and and need, and uh, therefore we are perhaps, I don't know, perhaps more sensitive about the, um, the history of, of Germany um, before our generation, the Nazi times, the war times, uh, and everything that went with it. It seems to me that the younger generation uh, is less connected to that awful history that uh, has been in, in Germany in particular. You know, so there's a there's perhaps a little bit more um, carefulness and reluctance uh, when it comes to things like, say, military, uh, when it comes to stories of, of, of war, and also when it comes to, um, to a kind of, of leadership, whether it be in government or in church, where one person rules and is the Führer, the leader, you know, uh, it, it, it's very quickly turning towards a dictatorship. So people of my generation are very sensitive to that because they said, our parents followed this Hitler. Why did they do this? How could they be so stupid? That's a typical thing that my generation would say. But uh, today we experience many uh, leaders in the world who are similar, uh, similarly uh, dictators, and I think we are. My generation is very much on guard about these things, as well as opposed to military. Um, and I personally, as I mentioned, uh, my values are uh, about food not being thrown away because um, my mom was starving. I never was starving, but she was, and that was passed on to me in a way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We understand from your answer that uh, somehow your values are affected by events that happen affecting also your generation. And I think we can yes. all relate to that. If time was given, we could also share some stories showing how our culture, events happening in our surrounding has affected our, our views. Uh, we could simply say we are the generation we have, who have the World Trade Center explosion, we have witnessed now the corona, all these things will affect somehow the way we understand life and the way we go about life. But most of all, <laughs> one thing remains, as you said, it's our connection with God and we have to keep on worshiping. So 
Uh, I don't know if you have a final word. I've said a lot, but the time is almost over. Uh, I just wanted to thank you. If you have a final word, it now is the time. I just want to encourage you to tell your stories and to reflect on your stories, because that means reflecting on your values and passing them on as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We want to thank God who has allowed us to greet a new Sabbath. Uh, we know that every one of us uh, has had a very loaded week and now comes the time for the Sabbath rest. May you all enjoy the peace of the Sabbath day. We thank again our guest speaker, Andrea Bochmann, for this wonderful presentation where we have been reminded of the interconnection between the generations and also the desire that God has to put every generation together in worship. And the final aim, you know it all, we know it all, is the salvation of humanity. We want to thank the team that has made this possible. And now we are about to say goodbye, but we want to invite you to keep joining every Friday, 7.30 on the same channel, the same YouTube channel. Invite your friends. Shabbat Shalom is made for you. And do not forget, tomorrow morning, there will be a Sabbath school lesson discussion at 10.30. And after that, at 11.30, there will be the English worship service, please. Tune in, come, discuss the word of God with us, and also worship God with us. Do not forget that we have meeting under the word every Wednesday, and the link will be always shared with you, student of Freedom Hall. Before finishing, I invite you to close your eyes where you are, and we pray, our oh God. Our Father in heaven, thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for the Sabbath. We are entering uh, the sacred hours of rest. May you help us to stay connected to you in this day, in our thoughts, in our actions, in worship, and also in our relationship with our brothers and sisters so that we can enjoy the beauty of this day. We thank you for Andreas. We thank you for this special service please bless our viewers and help us to keep on connecting keep on worshiping no matter what generation we are from we thank you again we have asked you all this in the name of our savior and lord jesus christ amen <laughs>